Hello. Hello. Oh, I just want to say. You're the idiot that's telling me to hurry up, and you're the last one on the call. I'll still to come. Aye, I'll still to come, too, fair. 100% man, there was no Wi Fi in the gym. That's how we always had to come back out. <laughs> uh, Alan, Dickie, can you turn your cameras, your phones, so your long ways? No. I don't no. want to see your face. <laughs> uh, you, you, you need your arm. Oh, what's happened to Al here? He needs to put on your, unlock your what screen. What do you do? Oh, unlock your screen. Oh, God. <laughs> I like where you're going with your toes. So, is that it? There we go. <laughs> How are you doing, boys? Nice to see you all. Hi, Laura. Hi, Laura. Nice to see you. Hi, it's happening. Where, where are you? Where are you all staying? Well, me and Declan are social distancing in the Marriott at the Orium in the Edinburgh. And Al is... Um, at the Norton House in Edinburgh. So about 10 minutes away for the boys. What's your kind of schedule like looking forward to the next few days? Basically, it's just train in the morning, do your, your prehab in the morning, uh, and go out and train about half ten. And that takes you up to about the afternoon. And after that, then you've got the you've got your lunch, and then you've got a bit of a free time if there's not any meetings and stuff like that or any press to do. After that, then you've got the option if you want to do a gym session or not, around about four o'clock-ish. And then basically after that, you're just waiting on meals and team meetings and stuff like that. So it's uh, obviously this trip's a bit different with socialising with the boys. Normally there's card schools, boys playing table tennis, or just boys getting in and out of each other's rooms, uh, having a bit of bonding time. But really that because of COVID this year, uh, it's just, it's not there, and obviously I know Soz has got to say something about bonding, so uh, it wasn't a bondage, I said it was bonding. I don't, so. know, I don't know who Declan shared the room with in his first couple of trips, but there's no one any bonding in Marins. <laughs> it's because they like you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Personal. Is it going to maybe affect team spirit and stuff in these games, the fact that, I mean, you guys aren't together all through the rest of the year. So to also not really be together during the international break as well, is that a bit going to affect you in some way? Um, obviously you need to see whenever the game's coming, how we, how we perform will be the, the real tell. But what I do know is that in the most trips that I've been on, like some of the best bits are whenever you're, you're in the, the kind of the, the social areas, kind of getting a bit of banter, hearing the stories from the different dressing rooms that they're in, um, hearing the highs and the lows of the other players and, and just getting to, to know them well as, um, as, as people and players. Um, so it could have an effect, but I think it's going to be the same for everyone. Al, uh, what's it like you've seen? You're reunited with James and DT. How's that been? That's been all right. Um, James is just his usual self, talking a lot of crap and uh, just being a pretty boy. But um, no, it's been good to see them. I've not seen James in a wee while, so it's been good to catch up. But again, it's a bit, a bit weird because you're not supposed to be in the same rooms as each other and that's a bit a bit strict like that so I don't think you get to go speak to them during the training but it's been good I've enjoyed it so far So then tell me a wee bit about what's what's coming up who who, have you, who are you playing against what's the significance of these matches? We have Israel on Friday night and then we're travelling to the Czech Republic on the Monday Sunday, Sunday. So Game on the Monday Declan get my point Tra- they travelling but so we're travelling on Sunday, games on Monday. But sorry, Monday. I've just found out that we're training on Tuesday as well, which is uh, back at Mother's, so that'll be a quick turnaround. Declan couldn't get me the day off. Sure. My dad was my dad was allowing it, sorry. Alan Alan, he gave it all this. I've got I've got clout, he gave it all this. Typical deck, eh? Typical. Yeah, I've never ever once said he told me to text the manager and ask what's happening Tuesday. I did. The manager's response was we're training at twelve, so you'll get plenty of sleep and plenty of rest. So plus the babies are scuddies and only playing, so just move them. I'll um who are the under twenty ones playing? What's the competition? Um I've got Lithuania next Tuesday and it's the European qualifiers. Um we're still having a chance to qualify, so it'll be a a big game and hopefully we can get a good result. Just a kind of welcome break for you guys just now after all the kind of crazy start to the season. I would say I know obviously because 
Um, I think on we haven't started the season well, so you always kind of want to get the next game going so you can kick things off and get back to winning games and playing good football. But then it's always good to kind of step back and reflect and see what you can improve on and what you can take back into training and have that extra bit of motivation. Right, yeah, now you take a back to improve play well. well. Your wife, I thought, That's right. the most change you've spoken all season, Al. <laughs> Am I just cutting out? Yeah, you also look like Conor McGregor with that haircut and beard, man. Yeah, don't mind that, man. Class. Confident then for the games? Um, I obviously were confident. A um, good bunch of boys that playing at a good level. Um, I'm sure the manager. And that will have a set up well and organised and ready to put in a performance to make sure we get a result. Is yeah. it cutting out again? I'll just leave this conversation better. I'll just leave. You're hopeless, lad. I know. Terrible Wi Fi. Can I help it, but? Probably one black spot in the full place and you're sitting in that coma. <laughs> I, th- I think the games are going to be hard that we've got. Um, but I think, again, uh, similar to what, what Alan has said, that we've got a squad that's, that's capable of playing playing well and, and, and getting two wins, which is the the target. But obviously, um, first and foremost, we want to try and beat Israel and then and then hopefully go on to the second game, having a wee bit of pressure off us because we've won the first. That was brilliant, guys. Um, best of luck in all the games coming up and um, see you when you're back at Motherwell. Thank Thanks. Cheers. 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 Bye. Cheers. Love you. <laughs> Bye. MTV, it's a day in the life. Decent, mate. So, I just, just the end bits, mate. Just got the Yeezys and that on the day, another pair of jeans. Got a grubby pair of denims, hoodie and that. I joined the club this summer, and I think that, you know, the first few months have been really well. It's a massive club, and you don't, I don't think you realise the extent of it until you come and join up. Now, I've seen, obviously, social media, and then you see even driving through the streets of Motherwell, the support that's there, and uh, it would just be brilliant for it to get them back in the doors and, and witness it first hand. Why do you take so long to play your shorts? Because uh, perfection takes time, little boy. So obviously I struck up a good bond with, with Big Decky at, at Livingston. <laughs> My first year there, obviously, he was there. And he's a great, great character. No surprise he's, he's got the armband. Should I hit it softer and left it in that pocket? Obviously grew up. A high school with Tony Watt as well, unfortunately, so I was his captain in the school team uh, back in the day. Put up with him for, for nearly four years until he, he went on to, to go and, and take his step into professional football as well. So, as I say, I've, I've followed his journey um, for, for his turn professional and obviously he has with myself and it's, it's amazing that we get the chance to, to go full circle and, and team up and share our rest with him. Good ball, right? Predominantly in my career, I've always played centre half. I grew up actually as a midfielder, and then but when I when I went into you know eleven sides as a younger boy, I always went into centre half, a sweeper actually to start with, and then uh, predominantly a centre half. But you know I, I'm kind of I merged with myself uh, into professional football as, as standing left back. And then you know I've played I played majority of my games at centre half, but I've always kind of you know I pride myself on that kind of versatility. Um, the gaffer touches on it as well. It's a good thing to have, especially when you've not got you know the resources to have a massive squad. Um, it's good, especially you know there's a few of the guys that um, selflessly help out and right across the pitch, and it's a brilliant thing to have and a good asset to have. So I'm, I'm feel comfortable at both, but I um, I think that. My, my best football gets played when I'm winning the heart of defence. The gaffer's brilliant, as is uh, the coaching staff at um, giving you guidance and stuff, because, you know, last year I think I maybe only st- stood in at left back maybe once or twice. People think it's easy just to switch, um, but there's going to be pointers and, and things, whether it's positioning or um, awareness and stuff like that, crossing into the box, different positionings and getting yourself back into it, but um, I feel I've done okay. Uh, some games better than others, I'm always critical of my own performance, but um, no, I think um, the manager and the coaching staff were, were reasonably pleased, and um, I, as was myself. Eh?
I think there has been plenty of positives regardless of the results but at the same time you need to be realistic and, and look at the results and say they've not been good enough especially for the standards that were set uh, ourselves at the start of the season and obviously the standards were set last season in the third place finish you know what I mean it's, it's no match day results and even though there's been there's been positives in the performances we know that there's things we need to do much better I'm sure that will happen there's no doubt about that there's no uh, dip in confidence there's no dip, certainly no dip in ability the ability is there and it's clear to see every day so um, I think it's only a matter of time we're working hard every day to put it right and I'm sure it will come We show we can do it different ways, we're not one dimensional, we've, we've worked on it for two weeks but ultimately it comes down to a desire to win football matches in, in both boxes and we showed that in abundance today. Oh, that's a good turn by Campbell. Excellent play by Alan Campbell. Still goes for goal. Oh. Brilliant play from Campbell. An outstanding opening goal. You know, we played some very, very good football without an end product. And, you know, we said we wanted to win with a, a determination. Defenders defending for their lives, midfielders landing on second balls and, and strikers rolling themselves into the ground. And the football will come, you know, if you do them basics right. I've never stopped believing in them, but to win a game of football, it just relieves a little bit of pressure off them. And we can go and, and continue that on Thursday night.